Uh, so uh, we now have uh, Dr. Costanza Armanini. Uh, she's going to talk to us about flagellum inspired underwater propulsion. Uh, Dr. Costanza has uh, done her bachelor's, master's and PhD from the University of Trento. Uh, she worked with uh, Professor David Bigoni for her PhD thesis, um, broadly focusing on um, uh, large deformations, uh, large elastic deformations and post buckling behavior in solid structures. She is currently a postdoctoral fellow at Khalifa University in Abu Dhabi. Uh, she is now working in the area of soft robotics. I understand that her presentation is going to be about her postdoctoral work. It will be followed uh, in about 30 minutes time by a talk by uh, Professor Sima. And then uh, in an hour, we will have uh, Dr. Max Mon joining us from the East Coast of the US. Uh, Dr. Costanza, you may please take over. I will stop sharing my screen. Yes. Okay, so can you, let me just start the video. Can you see my screen? Yes. No? Okay, I will, okay. Thank you very much for the presentation and thank you also for inviting me to this interesting symposium. Um, uh, so today I will discuss, I will uh, explain to you the research that has been carried out for the last year on a flagellum inspired soft underwater propulsor which exploits passive elasticity. I will present you both the modeling and also at the end some experimental results that we obtain. So this is a brief outline of my presentation. I will start with a little introduction on soft robotics in general and in particular on our bio-inspired design. And then I will tackle the modeling of soft robots in general and also of our propeller. And we employ a geometrical variable strain approach that I will briefly introduce to you, but you can find more details in this uh, paper, which has been published on IEEE RAL earlier this year. And in the end, I will explain to you also the design and the experimental test that we carried out on our flagellum soft underwater propulsor. And again, you can find more details in the IEEE IROS conference paper uh, from last year, and we just recently also submitted a new paper, so finger crossed. <laughs> and so, in recent times, soft robotics has received a growing popularity within the robotics community, tackling challenges that are hardly dealt with by traditional robotic technologies. And this trend, I think, has the main benefit that it was able to overcome the belief that a robot, in order to be functional and efficient, should be composed of rigid elements. So in fact, using rigid materials might, might not be always be a good idea, as you can see from these videos. So on the other hand, we have soft robots, which are realized by soft, flexible material, which in, uh, improve the interaction with the humans and also with the surrounding environment. They can easily adapt to different scenarios and they can stretch, bend, twist, similarly to the uh, biological system that inspired them. Among the numerous themes in which soft uh, robotics have quickly branched, underwater robotics stands out, as demonstrated by the vast number of soft bio-inspired underwater soft robots that have been recently proposed. Hoovering, short uh, radius turning, a fast start or slow down, are just a few examples which highlight how the design of soft robots uh, can profit massively from the investigation of the swimming uh, strategies and the hydrodynamics of the aquatic animals that uh, inspired these robots. So under this, under this, uh, all these examples of underwater soft robots are mostly characterized by an oscillatory, oscillatory propulsion mechanism. They are resilient, adaptable, and they are also intrinsically safe because they are uh, designed and fabricated with soft materials. On the other hand, we have traditional rigid propellers, which relies on a much more simple mechanism and a rotatory propulsion. And they are also modular, so it's very easy to combine multiple propellers in order to achieve increased performances and capabilities. So our plan is to somehow merge the main benefits of these two worlds in a hybrid soft rigid robot. So we took our inspiration from bacterial flagella. In fact, 
these little animals are also known as the only known example of a biological wheel. So a system which is capable of providing a continuous propulsive torque about a fixed body. So it's possible to find in literature some fragile lumens by robots, but their size is mostly ranging in the micro scale sizes. They are made of rigid materials, they are not articulators, and they work fine, but only at low Reynolds number. This is the scenario that the, we uh, envisage. So our uh, purpose is to build a full vehicle at the macro scale using multiple soft modules articulated, which can also work at high Reynolds number, which is biomimicking modular and also multifunctional because today I will present you how we want to use these modules to provide the propulsive uh, capabilities of the robot. But in the future we aim at using the same module also to grasp some, sorry, to attain some grasping capabilities. So the flagellum, the design of our system is based on the structure of the flagellum which is encountered in prokaryotic bacteria such as the E. coli. This type of bacteria has a single flagellum, helical flagellum, which extends from one end of the cell body. So the flagellum is divided in a more flexible end, which is the filament, and a stiffer base, the hook, which joins the flagellum to the cellular body. The hook is also connected to a spinning structure, which is the cellular module, motor, sorry, which is able to rotate in two directions. So the torque of the motor is transmitted across the hook to the filament and the elastic response of the filament interacting with the surrounding fluid enables the onset of the helical waves that provides the, thrustive, uh, the thrust propulsion. So based on these specifics, our flagellum is also composed of three main components. So we have the conical soft element, the filament, a stiffer procured uh, torsional stiff and with constant cross-section element, which is the hook. And then we have a, just a servo motor, which provides the rotation of the flagellum. We fabricated the, this flagellum using some silicon, which is uh, casted inside a Teflon mold, while we obtained the torsional stiffness of the hook using an ABS precured backbone insert inside the mold. So now I will present you the modeling technique that we used to uh, model such a uh, hybrid soft rigid element. In fact, I would say that one of the main challenges of soft robotics field is in fact the development of mathematical tools which are capable of describing the complex deformed configuration with both accuracy and simplicity. So on one side, we have the rigid links, which are generally treated with lumped deg degrees of freedom, usually revolute angles. While on the other hand, we have the soft links, which have distributed degrees of freedom. Many different approaches have been proposed to uh, model the soft links, such as the constant curvature uh, approach, the continuous construct model, or finally FEM. Our approach is, uh, will, I, was, I, will, I will show you, wants to treat the rigid, the soft, and so the hybrid robots indistinctly, so within the same scenario. So it's a geometric approach, which is based on the exponential map, which are generally used to treat rigid links, and which is also based on a strain param parameterization of the Coservatro theory. So let me go uh, briefly uh, to present you the light group notation that we used in our equation. So the element is fully described by uh, a position and orientation cure G, which in the homogeneous representation is provided by this matrix, where R is the rotation matrix and U is a position vector. Taking the derivative in uh, uh, time of g, we obtain the velocity in the body frame, which is provided by the twist vector eta. W are the angular speed and V the linear one. And taking the derivative in space, we obtain the strain. So the twist vector C defining the strain for our body, uh, where K again are the, let's call them angular strains, so bending and twist and y and torsion, sorry, while p represents the linear uh, strains, so shear and the actual strain 
On the right side, we have the, also the adjoint or co-adjoint representation of these quantities that you will also see in the future, the next slides. So a Coserat road is a continuous stack of rigid cross sections parameterized by curvilinear abscissa X, which goes from zero to L, the full length of the road. Each rigid, rigid cross section is identified by a moving frame, which is rigidly attached to, to the cross section. And so the configuration space of the road is completely defined by the Q of G. So, we can take the derivative of G uh, with respect to time and also with respect to space. And so we can obtain uh, the uh, differential kinematic equation and the speed, the twist for our system. And so taking the equilibrium of a section of the elastic, elastic road and limiting the length of the section to zero, we can obtain the PDE describing the road dynamics and also the ODE describing the static. Here, FE, are the external loads, which include also the, um, the fluid action on, on our module, while FA is the tendon, tendon or fluidic actuation which is inserted inside the arm. So, as I said previously, our approach is based on a discretization on the Coserat road theory, where the robot arm is divided in a finite number of pieces n uh, with variable strain. In uh, some previous work by my uh, collaborators, you can, you can find the piecewise constant strain approach where the arm is divided in a finite number of pieces with constant strain. This is a more general approach where we are assuming that the strain might also not be constant, but with specific uh, functions. So linear, quadratic, or uh, um, tri uh, triangular, for example. So the continuous strain field C is parameterized by a finite set of the interpolating nodes Q. So BQ here is a matrix function whose columns for the basis for the strain field that they are assumed. Q is the vector of the coordinates in that basis, while C star is the reference configuration. Here you can see, for example, the BQ that can be used in the case of a constant strain assumption. So when BQ, B is not a function of X anymore, for the lamped and then distributed uh, degrees of freedom system, depending on the, how we want to model these, these elements. So the position and the orientation field can be integrated using the Magnus expansion of C at the desired ordering yielding to the Magnus expansion omega. And so we can allow, this allows to express the shape G of the manipulator with respect to the finite state variable Q through the product of the exponential, which is commonly used, uh, done for treating rigid links. So now that we have the discretization of the strain field, we can insert it in, into the differential kinematic equation. And so we can uh, integrate analytically the velocity strain equation yielding to the soft robotics geometric Jacobian, which in robotics path the way to uh, the full description of the, the behavior of the robot arm, both for the static and for dynamic. Now let's go back to our hybrid soft rigid underwater propeller. Uh, so in this case, I will use a constant strain approach. So B will be a fun it was not a function of X anymore. So we are assuming that the uh, we are discretizing our arm in a finite number of pieces where the strain are assumed to be constant. So we have the, the motor, which is rotating, which is modeled as a revolute joint. We have the hook, which is treated as an extensible constant curvature element with the torsional stiffness. And then we have the filament. So the filament in particular is discretized in three sections. Uh, that are modeled as an extensible Kirchhoff-Lov road. So now under the assumption of constant strain, here you can see the equation that we get for the exponential map, so the configuration, the strain and the speed twist. And finally, we obtain the Jacobian and that we can use to uh, obtain the Coserat road dynamics in the traditional form. In the limit of x equal to one, we obtain exactly the same equations that are used to model rigid links. So as I said previously, the rigid components, such as in our case, the motor and the soft components, so the hook and the filament can be treated within the same, the same equation. 
Now let's go to the experimental results that we obtain. That so we perform different experiments, both to um, I mean to uh, check the accuracy of our model technique on one side, and also to investigate the swimming capabilities of our model. So the first trial consists in a static test, uh, which is done in a control environment. So the flagellum is held vertically by a static support. And the flagellum is completely submerged inside a, inside a tank where we have four cameras placed on the four sides of the tank. Uh, four, six, sorry, six markers are applied on the flagellum. And so from the videos of the experiments, we want to reconstruct the position of these six markers in order to reconstruct the deformed shapes of our filament, of our flagellum, sorry. So these are some examples of the experiments that we conducted. And here you can see also at the right bottom, uh, the result of one of our um, simulation. So the first uh, task was to compare the deformed shape obtained through the experiments with the one predicted by the model in order to confirm its reliability. And you can see the results here. And the second, um, the second reason why we did this experiment was also to obtain the drag and lift coefficients that were used to model the fluid action on our flagellum. And finally, we also used this test to start to have an idea on the uh, swim, the trust, the propulsive trust that the flagellum can provide. So we fabricated many different filament, different flagellum made out of different silicons. And also we made a, a, a rigid one with using ABS. We placed um, six degrees of freedom mini sensor on top of the static uh, support in order to measure the thrust provided by our uh, different flagellum. So here you can see the thrust that have been measured from the experiment and the one predicted by the, the simulation for three, uh, three silicons. The Dragon Skin 30 is the stiffer one that we use. The Ecoflex was the softest one. And more interesting here on the right, we have an ex uh, we can see how the thrust can vary depending on the omega, which is the rotation of the motor. In particular, in this graph here, you can see the thrust which we obtain at varying the stiffness of the flagellum. So at the highest speed, we can see that the thrust is increasing with the rigid, uh, sorry, with the stiffness of the, uh, the flagellum that we used. But we obtain exactly the, the opposite behavior at lower speeds. So the Ecoflex 50, which is the softest one, is providing a higher thrust with respect to the Dragon Skin 30. Let's move to the second trial that we perform, which is a self-propulsion test. So the motor is contained into a waterproof canister attached to the flagellum inside a big tank. The canister is held by a passive arm, which is then connected to a fixed base. So this is a passive arm. So it does not provide any kind of actuations. It is just necessary to, uh, to lift the canister uh, to prevent its sinking. At the connection between the passive arm and the fixed base, we have an encoder, which is measuring the uh, rotation of the passive arm. So in fact, we are, uh, this, this, uh, this setup uh, can be defined as a merry-go-round setup. So we are constraining the, um, our system to perform a curvilinear motion. And from here, this video, you can see the kind of behavior that we are expecting from our modeling. And these are some videos that we took during one of the uh, experiments. So the onset of the helical wave along the length of the filament is providing a thrust, which, in, uh, uh, which at the end provides the uh, pushes forward the passive arm. So at this point, we wanted to see what would happen using a rigid flagellum, which we made. And surprisingly, from the, the simulation performed, we obtained this behavior. So the rigid flagellum, which is not deforming, uh, uh, with, uh, with interacting with the surrounding fluid, instead of pushing forward the arm, is pulling it backward. And we obtain exactly this behavior also in our experiments. 
So going from a soft to a rigid material, once again, we can obtain completely different results. And this, uh, as my PhD supervisor said once, proves uh, once again the importance of the elasticity. So these are the speeds that we record with the rotatory encoder for, on the left, the dragon skin 30, so the stiffer silicon, again, a soft flagellum. You can see that as predicted by the static test, at increasing the speed of the motor, we are obtaining also an increasing uh, thrust. And this is also valid for the rigid flagellum, but with an opposite direction of the speed. And so to conclude, uh, I presented a flagellum inspired on the water propulsion, um, which is characterized by a simple rotatory actuation. It's modular. In the future, we want to make it also multifunctional, so to employ it to obtain both locomotion and grasping. It's resilient, adaptable, and it's also intrinsically safe because it's made of soft materials, so it can easily handle um, soft and fragile elements and without damaging them. The drop that thrust that we measured is 120 uh, millinewton, and we measured also a top velocity of 10 centimeters per second. We find, found some surprising relation between the flagellum elasticity and the self-propeller velocity. And in the future, we want to use this module uh, to also design full robots. So here you can see some results that we obtained recently. On the left, we have a prototype that has been built using a single flagellum. So the canister now is free to move and to swim inside the pool. We just use these two boat system to constrain the rotation of the canister, which is caused by the rotation of the, of the flagellum. While on the right, we have a full vehicle, which combines the action of four flagella, so in this case, we didn't need to constrain any motion because use working on the rotation, on the speed, and on the phase uh, of the of the four flagella, we are able to combine their reactions in order to to have only the thrust provided by them, and so to obtain a quasi <laughs> straight uh, locomotive swimming. So thank you very much uh, for uh, uh, your attention and also thank you again for inviting me to this uh, very interesting symposium and I'm uh, available if you have any, any question. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Costanza. I really enjoyed your presentation. I think we thank have you. a question from uh, uh, Dr. Tapome. Let, let me just unmute you one moment. Okay. Uh, Tapome, you can uh, please raise your question. You can now speak. Well, his question was, have you tried changing the periodicity of the flagellum? Um, what do you, does he mean with periodicity? I am not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, I, you'll have to unmute yourself to, to speak. Uh, I think he's, uh, he's live now. Well, uh, I'm not sure. Well, I had a question. I mean, in all yeah. these uh, soft robots, you always find these uh, arms have a tapering cross section. What's the thinking behind that? Um, sorry, can you repeat? I didn't hear the very well. In the shape so, of the arm, yeah, then mm -hmm. it has a tapering cross section from support to the free end. Yeah. What's the reason for that? The uh, papering cross section, you mean? Yeah, the, the cross section area, right, or the radius of the circular cross section. Yeah. This is from the support to the tip. Mm, okay. In our case, uh, we just used uh, as an inspiration the biological uh, flagellum. Mm. So I'm not sure if there is actually a reason for that. Probably because again, this is this, uh, most of these soft robots are inspired by nature, and this is in fact something that we find easily mm -hmm. in biological systems. So that could be the only reason I can think about. Okay. Uh, for the fluid in particular, uh, yeah, it it's also uh, we this kind of uh, cross varying cross section is very useful uh, to I mean to obtain at the same time. Uh, the transmission of the 
of the torque of the motor to the filament, but at the same time to enable its deformation. Right. Uh, so there is one question from uh, Rajesh Kumar. What's the material used? I think you mentioned silicon. Yeah, exactly. We use different kind of silicons. Uh, I think it, they are all here. So yeah, but it's only silicon except for the backbone inside the hook, which is used to obtain the torsional stiffness. And then ABS for the rigid one. We 3D printed it. In the fully flexible case, uh, I mean, because the because Tapoma is having trouble speaking, I'm not sure why. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm on. All Thank right. you. Okay. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Should I go on? Yes, please. Oh, hi. Uh, great talk. Uh, I just uh, wanted to ask, like, if you change the periodicity, means like you know you have like only kind of one curve uh, or like half helices uh, in your in your flagellum. If you change it, like if you make like two or three folds or like two or three turns in your flagella, uh, how does it change? Like how does the thrust change or like your, well, you know? Well, it's something that we actually want to investigate. So using different uh, design to be the leveraging of our results to also work on these and different geometries. Um, so I'm not sure how the trust will be affected, actually. For sure, uh, a lot would change because depending on the kind of deformation that we have, we can obtain completely different uh, results. In fact, I would say that the trust provided by our system relies mostly on the deformation of the, of the flagellum and its uh, interaction in particular with the fluid. So... I actually, I, I cannot predict how, how the trust will be affected by a different periodicity, but uh, for sure it's something that we want to also investigate. Yeah, interesting. Uh, I had a follow-up, but if you have time. Yes, sure. Um, do you know, like, if we, um, do you, uh, like, how should I think about relaxation in the system? And it, what I mean is, like, if you all of a sudden reverse the direction of the motor, uh, you know, what is the relaxation time? How long is it going to take to, you know, um, I guess so, like, yeah. yeah so you ahead. mean if we suddenly change the direction of the motor? Yeah. Um, well, so when starting, so here, for example, you can see, I think this is the best graph where you can see that. You can see how much time, yeah, in particular here maybe, you can see the time that it took uh, to from the, for the, here the motor is completely uh, is not rotating and then we are there is the um, the tra transition to the uh, to the this regime and so and it took around five seconds so I don't have a specific uh, prediction of the relaxation time that that might require but I would say uh, I mean. There are a lot of vibrations, so the flagellum to stop the flagellum of rotating that would require quite a much time, could be like 10 seconds or something like that, and uh, and then again to start again. So it can it could take uh, some time for sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tapomer. You're welcome. There are quite a few questions now. There are about four or five. Um, okay. So Maybe I can one, also open. Yeah, what you can do is uh, because these are all typed out, you can also see them on the chat window. Right? Yeah. I, I, I'm also going to ask a couple of questions. So, uh, in the interest of time, because people may be tuning in from different time zones, uh, we can conclude this presentation now, but continue the Q and A uh, through the chat window or by email if you prefer. Yeah. So thank you very sure. much, Dr. Costanza. I really enjoyed your talk. Um, thank you very much. So I will stop sharing my screen. I just noticed that I've never been on the video, but I don't know why it's not, <laughs> it's not starting for some reason. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Okay.